Over the years, Windows has made some controversial changes, and many users are starting to wonder if Microsoft still cares about them. <laughs> Recent updates like Windows Recall have led to a loss of trust. It also seems like Windows is focusing more on big businesses rather than regular users like us. Is that true? Probably. Let's look at that. Let's briefly talk about the history of Windows and how trust issues started. For some, it began with Windows Vista or even Windows ME, which was unstable but short-lived because of Windows XP. Personally, I think the turning point was Windows 8. It was a shift towards touch-based design that left many traditional users feeling ignored. But no matter where it started, the issues have been piling up. Fast forward today with Windows 10 and 11. Windows 10 had a rough start, especially with forced updates. I'm just remembering that video. <laughs> Single day, automatically, your PC needs to restart to finish installing important updates. Every single day, and every single day, I click later. You know why I click later? Because there's no option to click never. I'd like to click never. I never want to install these bull meaningless superfluous i hate them i hate these stupid updates look at this shit every day this comes up and you know what happens after you click later a few times when a few days goes by and you keep clicking later and later because you don't want to do it you just want to put it off this automatic bullshit that interrupts your work and makes you turn off your fucking computer and you click later every day eventually it takes away the option to even click later and it just says these are your only options it's basically putting a knife to your head and saying you can either you can either fuck you, you can either wait 11 minutes and we'll sh shut it off for you, or you can just, you know, bite the bullet and shut it off now. It doesn't even give you a choice to say no. It just comes up whenever it wants automatically and says, F you, we're turning off your computer no matter what you're doing in 10 minutes and 47 seconds. Look at this sh I am f***ing rendering something, you sucker! I'm doing important sh Why do you need to install updates? What updates? Some more Spyware so the NSA can keep watching what I'm doing, looking at my pics and watching me jack off, spying on me, Obama, you fucking I'm a racist! You made me a racist! It eventually... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it eventually got better when Microsoft made updates more manageable. But then came Windows 11. Just a few years after we were told Windows 10 would be the last version. At first, I didn't have a problem with Windows 11, or at least I didn't notice them. But it was clear that many users were struggling, especially with AMD drivers and they need to upgrade hardware to meet new requirements. Windows also started taking away customization options, replacing them with less useful features. And we can't forget Windows 10 pushed for cloud storage and those forced updates that interrupted projects. So the two biggest reasons I see for declining trust are Windows Recall and the Windows 10 Extended Security Updates. There's also the topic of AI, but we'll save that for another time. I actually, I'm actually writing something about AI as we speak. Windows Recall sounds very convenient, but privacy is a big concern. Microsoft says that the data is encrypted but in today's world, it's hard to just trust anything as completely secure. Just look at how Google is caught keeping data from incognito mode. If they can do it, so what's stopping other big tech companies? A lot of these issues seem to have started when Microsoft shifted its focus toward businesses. Think about it. Vista was resource-heavy, which hurt lower-end systems. Windows 8 forced everyone into a touch-based setup even if they didn't have a touch screen. And Windows 10, while initially frustrating with forced updates, also pushed cloud integration that many regular users did not want or need. The reality is big businesses have IT departments that decide how updates are handled, while regular users just have to deal with whatever Microsoft decides. And let's not forget the shareholders. If you look at their 2023 annual report, the first people they welcome are the shareholders. 
seems pretty clear where their priorities are. So, the big question. Should you switch to something else? It's up to you. Nobody's forcing you. Hopefully. <laughs> I understand why people are switching, but I also understand why some aren't. I have a little personal story pretty soon. I'll talk about that in this video real soon, but... Switching can be a hassle. If you're curious, try using a virtual... If you can, try use a virtual machine to test out different Linux versions before making a full switch, or unless you want to do Mac OS. You also need to adjust your workflow, which is a big reason why many businesses won't switch. Uh, it's just that Windows still offers a more streamlined workflow for a lot of standard tasks. So, I used Linux Navara. I have like a couple videos talking about it. Um, I used it for about four to five months. I I did a big oopsie whoopsie. I, I bricked my operating system. Can I fix it? Yeah, do I want to? I, yeah, I, I do. And, but even though I've been very critical of Windows, especially way before this video was even scripted, Windows just runs better for a lot of things that I do. I mean, my laptop is still running Linux. But the thing is, I'm so preoccupied with other things, and when I want to do something, I don't have time to do it. So I have to stick with what I know works for what I'm doing. But other than that, Linux is awesome at the same time if you yourself don't mess it up. And there's there's a few things that happen with the OS because technology sucks sometimes. But you don't need to upgrade your hardware. You have so much more freedom to do with your, what, what, what you want to do with your system. You don't need an account to use your PC like you do with Microsoft. You can customize just about anything. It's lightweight, it doesn't use so many system resources like Windows does, and I, I love it, I love it, but I can't, I can't just, I can't use it right now, fortunately, like I thought I could. So, if you can, get a virtual machine, um, try different Linux distros, see how it all works for you. Don't do it in a week like these other videos I, I've seen do. They're, they're entertaining videos, but it's just... A week is not enough. In fact, if you were like me when you just jumped in, that first two weeks is just getting making sure everything works. <laughs> but I would like for other people to give it a shot. Like I said, I'm, I still have Linux on my laptop over here. I just can't use it as my main OS for the time being. Once you get it all running, it it just works. I was trying to do something different. This is. I'm sure a lot of people have been through this, but usually you just get it running. If you just wanted to get a, an OS that's just running like web browsing or whatever, it's simple. But I, I like doing a lot of other things, so I, I kind of messed up and that put problems on top of other problems and it just broke it. That was my bad. But give it a shot or try Mac OS if you want. It's just that with Linux, you, the issues you run into are usually your fault and not because of a higher business platform or whatever you want to call it so um yeah check that out try that try it check out my other videos about linux um if you like the video like it subscribe if you haven't hit that bell icon so you know when i upload again check the links down below and i'll see you guys in the next one take it easy